Um, my name is Gabriel Gasque, and I am head of outreach here at protocols.io. So as I mentioned before, I am sharing my screen and I am recording uh, the presentation, uh, which will be shared with all registered participants. Uh, before I start, let me introduce myself. I have a background in experimental neuroscience with doctoral studies and postdoctoral training. And before joining protocols.io about a year ago, as head of outreach, I was an editor for nine years in an open access journal, in the open access journal Plus Biology. So I consider myself a scientist, as well as an advocate for open science, experimental reproducibility, and research integrity. So you should be able to see the agenda on the screen. I will speak for about 30 to 35 minutes, leaving plenty of time at the end for questions, which you can start typing any moment in this uh, um, logo in the Zoom chat Q&A. So in this webinar, we will go over some of the more general points in terms of the motivations for creating protocols.io, what our mission is, and how our platform and tools can make your work easier and faster, both in the research lab as well as the classroom. And it can also increase your reproducibility. And although I'll share a lot of information, we will not have the opportunity to go over all the details of the different functions and tools of protocols.io. For that reason, at the end of my presentation, I will share with you some resources that you can browse for more information. But let's begin with what protocols.io is. It is a virtual platform for the collaborative development, sharing, and publication of detailed, up-to-date, and reproducible experimental protocols before, during, and after publication of a research article. Protocols.io was created by researchers for researchers. And as a context, we have collected a series of tweets that comment on the difficulties and frustrations of trying to replicate previously published experiments. And as you can read on this specific tweet, Daniel goes from reference to reference, trying to understand how certain devices reported in a 2017 paper were fabricated. And when he finally reaches the original publication from 2009, it simply says, devices were fabricated with conventional methods. And that's all the information he gets. This is just an example that highlights what we think is a widespread problem. That is very often the information reported or included in the materials and methods section of published articles is insufficient to allow the reader to understand what was done and to reproduce the experiments. As part of the background on why we created protocols.io, we like to talk about the Cancer Biology Reproducibility Project, which was a $1.5 million initiative coordinated by the Center for Open Science and by Science Exchange with the goal of trying to independently replicate almost 200 experiments from about 50 high profile papers on cancer biology. What the reproducibility project researchers discovered very soon after the project began is that it is very difficult to replicate previously published work. And there are several reasons why this is the case, but one of them is that the original researchers didn't document in their articles with enough detail what they did and how they did it. So what you see on the screen is the Center for Open Science website that summarizes some of the results of the Cancer Biology Reproducibility Project. 
And as you can see, of the 193 experiments that they tried to replicate from 53 articles, 0% of the protocols were completely described, which made it impossible to reproduce them without contacting the original authors. Equally striking, when researchers from the Reproducibility Project contacted the original authors, they also discovered that these did not always could tell how exactly their own experiments had been done. Therefore, the lack or the, the problem of lack of reproducibility goes beyond the lack of adequate reporting in published articles, but also highlights deficiencies in the way researchers keep record of their own experimental protocols for housekeeping. This is caused, among other reasons, because people move from labs. Students graduate and leave, postdoctoral researchers become faculty elsewhere, and so on. Also, it is not unusual that traditional paper lab books get misplaced, are damaged, or lost. Therefore, we thought that an electronic system for the proper storage and exchange of detailed experimental protocols was needed. Protocols.io's mission is simple. It is about making it easy for researchers to share the details of their experimental methods before, during, and after publication. Generally speaking, Protocols.io comes in two flavors. So we have a free open access platform, which provides unlimited protocols as long as they are made public. You can publish all these protocols, getting a unique digital object identifier or DOI for each of them. With a DOI assigned, the published protocols become permanent and citable. We also have premium accounts that offer everything the free plan offers, plus an unlimited number of private protocols and private workspaces, premium training, and for the institutional accounts, a free protocol import service. You can find more details about our plans at protocols.io slash plans slash academia. And I will explain later on what workspaces are and how the protocol import service works. Some of you might already have an institutional premium account if your university is a partner of protocols.io. And you can check this by going to protocols.io slash institution and scroll down or scroll in the menu that I am showing to you right now. So you can see here if your university is already a partner with protocols.io, which means you have a premium access to the platform. Now, going back to our mission and features. So in addition to improving the documentation and reproducibility of experimental methods, Protocols.io offers many other advantages that directly or indirectly are linked to this general aim. I will use the next few slides to discuss how Protocols.io can help you improve your everyday work, whether it's research or teaching. So we launched Protocols.io in 2014. We currently have over 100 30,000 registered users who have created over 13,000 public protocols and almost 50,000 private protocols. The public protocols are all open access, which means anyone with an internet connection can search for them, read them, use them, copy them, and create new versions. Last year, our protocols had over 1 million readers. Several organizations, 
including over 500 scientific journals, funding agencies, and educational and research institutions support and promote the use of protocols.io. As I will describe next, protocols.io can support, facilitate, and increase the quality of your research and teaching because it allows you to manage and share research data and protocols. It allows you to simplify teamwork and improve collaborations, and it allows you to save time and keep your work organized. It is also a tool to increase your impact as a researcher, to get granular credit for your technical and methodological discoveries and innovations, and to improve your performance as an educator. In the next slides, I will try to create a bridge between the different features and tools of Protocols.io and the benefits that Protocols.io offers for researchers and teaching, explaining how the architecture and functionality of the platform enable everything I listed before. Organize your work, collaborate, save time, increase your impact, get credit, and teach better and easier. But before I go into the details of the features and their functionality, I would like to briefly summarize why using protocols.io gives you precision and flexibility in your experimental um, research. And to do so, I'm going to show you how one of our public protocols look like. So I'm going to open it on the internet. And what I want to show you is that the protocols in protocols.io are a live, dynamic, interactive document that goes beyond a traditional static PDF. So the protocols are written in a step-by-step -step fashion. They're very detailed, recipe-like instructions. Different sections of the protocol can be coded in different colors. There is a table of content, and I can navigate to the different sections of the protocols. As you can appreciate, the protocol can be enriched with images, pictures, and even videos. And these are interactive documents because the protocols accept comments, and the authors will be notified when a comment is posted. It is very easy to make a copy or a fork of the protocol. And these are also dynamic documents because they can be run from the computer or tablet. As I complete the steps of the protocol, as I perform my experiment, the program shows us the advance of the experiment. And at the end, I can generate a record of the experiment as an independent file. Let me go back to the presentation. So protocols.io has three main sections the workspaces, which I mentioned before, the file manager, and the editor. And I will explain in the next slides how they relate to each other by using a simple cartoon. I know that people are already typing questions in the chat. I will get to those at the end of the presentation. So the workspace is where everything happens in protocols.io. It is from this space that you create protocols, organize your work, and collaborate with others. The workspace has a folder that is organized by the file manager. In the file manager, you can use the editor to create protocols. During my explanation on what each of these sections or features does and how they relate to each other, I will be moving back and forth between them.
So if you go to our website, what you see on the screen is a landing page. You can create an account if you have not done so already and log in. You can also log in using Google, Facebook, or Orkid. Once you start a session, the system will ask you to create a workspace, which is the step number one. In step number two, the system will also ask you if you want to invite someone to join this new workspace. But this is not mandatory. That means like you don't have to invite anybody to join your workspace right now. Once you have created the workspace, you will have access to the file manager, which is now empty because the workspace is new. To the left, you have access to the workspace administration menu. And to create a new protocol, you have to select the new button and that will take you to the editor. The file manager will eventually contain, display and organize the protocols you have created within the workspace. The file manager supports any file type it helps you archiving, auditing, and exporting because it can connect, connect to Dropbox, OneDrive, and Google Drive. And it has been designed with enterprise-grade security and backup functionality. The editor, which you reach by selecting the new button from the file manager, has detailed components a granular editing history and allows all changes to be reverted. It also allows concurrent editing by two or more collaborators, the same way two or more people can work simultaneously on a Google document. The protocol itself can be written in a step-by-step -step format, as I showed you before, and different sections of the protocol can be coded in different colors. You can also upload images, figures, pictures, and videos to your protocol, as I show you in this example that instructs or teaches how to record movies in a specific microscope. And I am sure that many of you already have a long list of existing protocols in PDF or Word format. And this is not a barrier to adopting the use of protocols.io. So we offer our users a protocol import service by which you can send us your existing protocol in any format, and we will typeset it and upload it in the step-by-step -step format of protocols.io. We will double check it to make sure there are no errors or typos relative to the document that you provide, and we will send it back to you for review. And if everything looks good, the protocol will be reassigned to you privately, and you will be able to publish it whenever you're ready. So this service has a cost starting at $50 and goes up depending on the complexity of the protocol, but it is free for all premium users Now, going back to the workspace. This is a space for collaborations. As I mentioned before, you can invite people to join your workspace. They can be students or postdocs, another faculty member at the same institution, or external collaborators. To invite collaborators, you go to the administration menu of the workspace and select manage members. Then you can invite new like people to join your workspace by using their protocols.io handle or their email address. You can make your workspace public, meaning that it will be searchable by external users and people can request to join or you can make your workspace completely private. 
You can also manage the privileges that members will have and limit what they can do, such as editing your protocols or inviting other members or sharing or deleting files from the workspace folder. All this is customizable. Workspace members can make comments on the protocols you have created and share with them or ask questions. And I show you in this movie how comments work. So the user select the bubble with a plus symbol and writes a comment and post it. When posting the comment, it will be registered in the system and the owner of the protocol will be notified via email. The owner can then come to the system and respond to that comment on question. And the contributor will also be notified. And the entire conversation will be recorded in the system and can be used as a future reference for, um, by other readers. The members of the workspace can also make changes to the protocols if you have enabled that functionality. And as I previously mentioned, there is a detailed log of all implemented changes that can be reverted if needed. The members can also create their own protocols or make a copy of an existing protocol and modify it according to their needs. For example, you could have optimized a protocol to work in rats or mice, and then one of your collaborators can make a copy and further optimize it to adapt it to work in rats. The platform also allows you to compare two versions of the same protocol. In this case, the new version is to the left and the changes automatically detected by the platform are highlighted in red. And even if a member of your workspace leaves, because for example, a graduate student graduates, the protocols will remain organized, up to date and available in the file manager. As I mentioned above, the file manager supports many types of documents, not only protocols. You can upload PDFs, Word documents and Excel spreadsheets. And everything can be further organized into subfolders. You can also select or print your protocol or export it as a PDF to Google Drive, Dropbox, or OneDrive. And we also have integration with some electronic notebooks. And let me show you, let me open a protocol to show you how this is done. So you go to more, export, and then you can either print or create a PDF to send it to your computer, any of these cloud-based drivers or lab archives. If you send it to your computer, you can then also print it. And I show you how the PDF would look like, starting with the introduction, the abstract, and then going to the step-by-step -step protocol. However, as I mentioned briefly before, rather than printing or having a hard copy of your protocol at your bench while you perform your experiment, you can run it directly from a tablet, cell phone, or your computer. Which is what I'll show in the movie that should be playing now. So the run button allows you to run the protocol. You can tick off every step as you make progress. It comes with integrated timers that you can set at different times for different steps. And when the time is over, the computer or cell phone will let you know with a beep. 
You can also tweak specific steps or add comments as you perform the experiment. And at the end, you can save the run as an independent file. And if you tweak a step, the original protocol won't be modified, only that specific run. You can collaborate beyond your workspace by sharing your protocols with specific people via email or by publishing them. Publishing the protocol will assign to it a DOI and will allow anyone with an internet connection to search for it and to access it. It will also create a lock that will not allow further changes to the protocol. So once the protocol is published, you cannot edit it any longer. A published protocol with an assigned DOI is a citable object that can be referenced to in a paper. And this will give additional credit to the author's methodological work. The reference will also be linked to the protocol in protocols.io, so the reader will have access to the interactive step-by-step -step protocol, even if the paper was published behind a paywall. And the platform keeps record of all traffic and use of the protocols, including the number of views, bookmarks, exports, copies, comments, and citations. Any reader can comment or ask questions as I showed you earlier, and the author will be notified. And this will expand your network of collaborators and strengthen your impact and reproducibility. And we have seen cases where researchers report that sharing and publishing detailed protocols leads to an increase in the number of collaborations. Once the protocol is published, any reader can copy it and modify it according to their needs. And the platform has a memory that will link any copied protocol to the original one. In this way, the original authors will maintain and earn credit. So in this example, this is a protocol modified. So this is a modified protocol, a modified version of an original protocol created by somebody else. And the platform tell us that the protocol was forked from another protocol, which is what I am highlighting in blue right now. And the reader can access the original protocol by following the blue link. Therefore, all authors will get credit for protocol creation and optimization, and their reader will have access to the history of changes and evolution of the protocol. And with an assigned DOI, you can use the link to protocols.io as part of your materials and methods section, which we think will simplify your work. So if you adopt the use of protocols.io early on during your research project, we think that when the time comes to write and submit a paper, by having DOIs that can replace part of your materials and methods, you will be simplifying your work. So in this example, this is a paper published in the journal Plus Biology, and the authors have created and uploaded their protocols in protocols.io receiving a DOI which they include in the materials and methods section. The reader will have access to the detailed protocol in the platform. And a nice thing about how protocols.io works is that the protocols are versionable. So if the authors updated their protocol since the time of publication, the reader will be automatically notified that there is a new version. And the reader can choose to read what was published or to read the new version or both. Protocols.io recently established a partnership with the journal PLOS ONE, 
whereby you can submit from our platform a novel protocol for peer review and eventual publication in this journal as a lab protocol article. And the published lab protocol in PLOS One will be bidirectionally linked to the interactive and dynamic protocol in protocols.io. As I mentioned before, once a protocol is published and receives a DOI, it cannot, be mod it cannot be modified any longer, but you can copy it and modify it as needed, and new versions created. Now, going back to the workspace, you can create in your account multiple workspaces depending on your research and teaching needs. You can create workspaces for different research projects or to teach different courses. Each workspace can have different members and contain different protocols and documents, giving you great flexibility for organization. And finally, protocols.io can be used not only to share experimental protocols with the research community, but it can also be used by teachers to share instructions with their students. What you see on the screen right now is an example of how protocols.io has been used to teach a class. As you can see, the teacher gives detailed instructions to the students on how to perform a sequence alignment. The teacher enriches the instructions with videos and images, and the students can ask questions about specific steps and all these discussion will be recorded. The teacher can also indicate which steps are optional and which steps are critical. In sum, protocols.io helps you stay organized, collaborate efficiently, save time, increase your impact, get credit, and teach efficiently. Now, before we open the floor for questions, I would like to point you to the different resources we have for additional training. So first of all, we have these regularly scheduled webinars. So you can go to protocols.io slash webinar and find the list of upcoming webinars, which have covered different topics and are scheduled for different time zones. We also have a series of pre-recorded tutorials that explain with short videos, different features, tools, and applications of protocols.io. And if you scroll all the way down, there is a link to request a one-to-one -one demo. In these sessions, you will have the opportunity to share your screen, ask questions, and we will do the same. So it's a very interactive way to get yourself familiarized or resolve any question you have about the platform. And with this, I'll stop and start answering the questions that you have already uh, typed in the chat. So, so the first question comes from uh, Nele. And she's asking whether there are certain standards and guidelines to follow when preparing your protocol. So we are like a preprint server, similar to BioArchive. We don't do peer review of the protocols and we don't have any specific guidelines on how a protocol should be written. However, we recommend that you do your protocols, that you write your protocols as detailed as possible using images and videos. Uh, the only sort of um, editorial work that we do is we remove protocols that are spam or that are incomplete. But other than that, authors are free to write the protocols and publish the protocols uh, however they wish to do so. Um, Richard asks, are the colors standardized to anything or just a way to generally highlight different sections? They are just a way to highlight different sections. Uh, the colors themselves 
do not mean anything. Uh, Annele also asks, she's a bit confused by the option to record a protocol. Can you use protocols.io as a form of electronic lab notebook to record how you did in developer experiments? And the answer is yes. So you can run the experiment, save a record, and when you open the record, it will contain a timestamp of when the experiment was done. If you add comments or if you tweak a step, that information would also be contained. And this is a file that you can then export to Dropbox or Google Drive, or can also export to certain electronic lab books. And you can also share it. You can share your record via email uh, with a collaborator, let's say your PI, for example. So Paul Furman asked, systematic reviews and scoping reviews use systematic methods to create reviews of topics that can serve as a basis for other types of research such as experimental studies that address empirical question. So the question is, can protocols.io be used for protocols and research that support the production of such reviews of research? Yes. So uh, the use of the platform is agnostic to the type of research. And we have seen people use it to document, first of all, to design a systematic review and to, so to do the, um, yes, to, to design, to the design of the systematic review. So Lucy asked, can we have the information in Spanish to organize protocols group? You can write your protocol in any language the platform only operates in English and the import service only works for protocols written in English, but I'm a Spanish speaker. I have some protocols written in Spanish. Uh, I can publish them in Spanish uh, and you can, uh, you can name your folders in Spanish or any other language. So Terry O asks, what does the import service cost? If you are a member of an institution, a university that is a partner of protocols.io and has the institutional premium account, uh, the, the cost is zero, it's free for those users. If you are an independent user that is not associated with an institutional account, it has a cost of $50 and it might go up depending on the complexity and length of the protocol. Paola asks, how do you cite a protocol that has been changed by others? Like suggestions or question, is there a DOI per protocol or is there one for each version? Each published version receives a DOI if a protocol receives a comment, the DOI doesn't change. It is the same DOI. And only the authors can version their protocol. So any reader can create a copy and create a, a new independent protocol, but it's not a new version of the protocol. For a protocol to be called V2 or V3 or V4, it has to be done by the same authors. And each version receives a unique DOI. Susan Hasty asks, will the recording be made public and or sent to webinar attendees? Yes, I will be sharing the recording and the slide with all registered participants. Uh, and Susan Hasty also asks, are there any communities of practices working with this application? Uh, let me see if I understood your question correctly, Susan. So I'll go to my file manager. 
So usually communities work in workspaces and there are groups of scientists that have created public workspaces that can be seen by, by anyone and they contain protocols on certain topics. So let's say if I search uh, for COVID, I can search publications, but I can also search workspaces. And workspaces are communities of collaborations, collaborators. The creators can create these workspaces in a private mode, meaning that the members would only be those that the creator, the administrator has invited. But what you can see on the screen now, these are all public workspaces. And this specific workspace that is a coronavirus method development community has almost 270 publications and over 600 members. And uh, yes, so I think that I'm answering your question, Susan, but let me know if that is not the case. If I didn't answer correctly any of the questions that you posted, let me know and I will give it another go. So Rebecca, E. Skinner is asking, what is the cost of membership for community labs or open science nonprofit? The cost for nonprofits is similar to the cost for universities. And we have a open contract. I don't know the amounts right now. And we charge uh, universities or communities by the number of users. Um, and but we have an open contract. So let's see if I can find it here. Um, so if you go to the institutional account, uh, let me see. So if you go to this uh, URL, which I'm gonna be pasting in the chat, you have access to the open contract. So it starts at 10,000 uh, yearly, uh, I think that for 100 users. So, uh, okay, so Rebecca further elaborates and it's counter culture labs in Oakland, probably 12 users or so. Probably the best way to go in that case, rather than institutional membership, will be a private workspace. And a private workspace, again, if you go to here, it starts at $16 per user. But if you want more information, Rebecca, you can email me uh, personally and we can discuss what will best, what would be best for your organization. I'm gonna type my email in the chat. I will stop the recording now in case anybody wants to ask any question of the record. Oh, sorry, I meant I was gonna, that's not what I meant to do. I was gonna stop the recording. <laughs> 